What up, comic fans? It's Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Got a big pile of books in front of me, which means it's time for another top 10. This time we're going to talk about my favorite writer of all time, Grant Morrison. I love that man so much. I love most of what he writes so damn much. So I'm very excited to do this video. This is uh, mostly material. I mean, I haven't read everything by Grant Morrison. I don't think so anyway, but I, I'm probably missing some of his uh, old UK stuff, but um, I've read most of what he's done and uh, I love so much of it. So I'm very excited to talk about my top 10. Let's dive in. In case you're not aware, you can subscribe to this channel. Uh, we post content daily, comic book reviews, news, upcoming books, live streams, all kinds of stuff. Uh, every single day we try to post a video. So uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the, the like button as well. That thumbs up really helps us out a lot. Be sure to check out Dr. Squatch too if you're interested in a soap subscription. What that means is they will bring soap to your door once a month uh, for as long as you'd like. So uh, it's a great service. They're an organic soap and men's healthcare product company. So you're not getting any parabens or chemicals or any of that stuff that you get in uh, other brands, store, store bought brands and it's great they have fantastic advertising as well it's really really funny matt uses them he absolutely loves their products so uh, we highly recommend checking them out with the link down in the description below you will get free shipping on your subscription as long as you have it for life also check out our patreon if you're interested in hardcover comic giveaways we're doing one a month for now um you know depending how much uh, money we get from our patrons the more books we'll be able to give away every month. We do give away digital codes and uh, whatever else we can throughout the throughout the weeks as well. It's it's great. There's a lot of fun stuff happening. So check out the link down in the description below for that as well. Grant Grant Morrison. Uh, where to begin? Where to begin? Um, he was he, he was my favorite writer ever since I started reading one of the books that's in this video, uh, because he had a, a really interesting way at, at looking at comic books. And I was blown away by what he did with uh, with this story that I read. And then I kept reading more of his work, and I just kept falling more and more in love with it. He's usually got fantastic artists working with him. He's got crazy ideas, uh, ridiculous dialogue at times. It's a bit difficult to follow along, not going to lie. It's not always the most straightforward type of storytelling, and that has its pl uh, pluses and its minuses. Of course, I don't love everything Grant Morrison did, but most of it... There are a lot of things that just went right over my head too. But anyway, I got 10 books in front of me. Well, 10 stories, runs, whatever you want to call it, in front of me that are we're going to take a look at uh, individually. Um, so let me just clear out rooms here and uh, get things started. Start with Absolute All-Star Superman. I don't know why I want to start with this. It's not necessarily a number one, not necessarily a number 10. But I guess... Uh, let, just get it out of the way. Uh, I've spoken about this story in other videos. It's absolutely phenomenal. I have the absolute edition of the story. Of course, there's a regular trade paperback. You could probably get the original hardcover. I think there may have been two hardcovers. Um, and I think that's it. I don't know if they ever did a deluxe edition for it, but that would make sense to do if they haven't yet. The absolute edition is fantastic. This is a story by Graham Morrison written with artwork by Frank Quitely, uh, a phenomenal artist who I absolutely adore as well. This is the perfect Superman story in my opinion. It pulls at my heartstrings. It gives me hope. It gets me excited about comic books. It gets me excited about Superman. It gets me excited about the DC universe. It gets me excited about the ideas uh, uh, that these creators come up with when crafting stories. Um, there are some really, really cool things happening in this book. Little details, things you may miss, one or two page. Uh, you know, at times you'll read a whole issue and there will be one or two pages that sticks out to you that may not stick out to someone else. The, the great thing about Grant Morrison is he, he's been through a lot in his life. He's got a lot of experiences and he tries to throw in a whole uh, bunch of stuff in there. So I felt like every time I read this story, I get something new out of it. And at the very least, I get to be uh, very happy about Superman and the fact that in this story, he is the absolute perfect version of the character that I can read over and over again while Bendis does what he wants to. Next up, Grant Morrison's JLA. We have an omnibus coming to us. It's supposed to be, I think, summer or fall. Who knows when it's going to be now, but it's still supposedly in the works. I have not seen any news about cancellations. We are going to get a JLA by Grant Morrison omnibus. I have my two custom binds here. If you're new to this, you know, the, the terminology I'm using, an omnibus is essentially a hardcover comic that will collect an entire storyline or an entire run. I will show some later in the video. 
I mean, there's going to be one for uh, JLA by Grant Morrison. It's going to collect every issue he worked on, all in one oversized hardcover book. These are custom binds. Custom binds are essentially um, single issues or trade paperbacks you take and you get them bound in a hardcover comic. I happen to also have dust jackets here that were designed for me by a gentleman named Ben Williams. He's no longer in the dust jacket game. I now make my own dust jackets. If you're interested, hit us up uh, or hit us up at our email or message us down below here. But anyway, JLA by Grant Morrison. Man, what a ride this story is. Uh, this was the, you know, late 90s-ish, 97 stuff that Grant Morrison did for JLA where he brought back the the OGs. He brought back Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter. Uh, the Flash was Wally West at the time. Uh, Green Lantern was Kyle Rayner. Um, and then you've also got some other characters that come in like uh, Plastic Man, Steel comes in as well, Huntress. There are a lot of really cool characters introduced in this run. He does also introduce some fantastic villains like Prometheus. Um, you get to see the dark. You get to see Dark Side, of course, with Rock of Ages. There are some fantastic storylines in here. The characters are all written perfectly. Um, you have this sort of air, transitional era for Superman as well, where he's Superman Blue, and I think Grant Morrison was one of the writers who used his powers in the coolest way, in my opinion. And really, it's just a great exploration of the DC universe. I mean, Grant Morrison does it all, right? He's the the writer who sort of brought back the grand scale of things with. Uh, the Justice League, a lot of writers try to do that all the time. Scott Snyder did that recently, did a pretty good job of it in doing these huge, massive, epic storylines. You know, we had Brian Hitch try it with Justice League Rebirth. It didn't work out so well. Grant Morrison knocks it out of the park. Of course, big thanks to Howard Porter and all the other artists that uh, worked with him on these incredible stories. The You know, it's just great. It's just a really fun time. Grant Morrison has such a deep and rich appreciation for the DC universe. Uh, there's a lot of throwbacks in here. There are a lot of really great fanboy moments in this uh, run, and I highly recommend checking out the Omnibus when it comes out. If not, try getting your hands on the trade paperbacks. I think volumes one through four collect all of the Grant Morrison material. Or you can usually find a, a lot on eBay for like the entire JLA uh, run 125 issues for all the JLA issues of that volume. You can find them for like 80 bucks, 70 bucks on, on eBay. So there are, are a few options when you're looking to collect this. Uh, the most exciting one, I guess, would be the upcoming Omnibus. Next up on the list, Klaus. So we've got two hardcovers right now for the, uh, the IP, I guess. Uh, the first one being the original nine issue, I think it was, mini series that uh, Grant Morrison wrote, artwork by Dan Mora, who is another stunning artist and then you get this klaus the new adventures of santa claus that collects a few one shots that they did essentially every year uh, around christmas time dan moore and graham morrison are releasing a single issue usually a, a, a an oversized issue really nice prestige format from boom comics uh, they'll do one a year now so um they've sort of collected a few of them in here uh and i i hope we see more i mean i really hope we do i hope we get like a sequel to the original klaus because it was amazing these are the uh, deluxe editions there beautiful books really really solid great binding and one of the cool things they have is this sort of um, gold uh, I don't even know what to call it finish on the on the book edge on the book block it's really really nice these are really beautiful hardcovers I really love them it's a great story to reread around Christmas every year and you get a new issue every time too so you get a new story uh, Klaus is of course a Grant Morrison's take on the origin of Santa Claus where did he come from who was this guy uh, and and how did all of this get started um, so that's what the original hardcover comic collects. And then the mini the mini series are, you know, throughout the year is what's happening with Klaus as he goes um, on adventures and, and explores various other uh, areas of the world. And it's great. It's a lot of fun. It's a great fun universe. It's very, it's, it's relatively lighthearted. It can get dark at times, but relatively lighthearted. It's a book you can read with your family. It'll get you emotional. It'll make you happy. It, it's everything Graham Morrison always does. Sometimes he'll just grab a character or an idea and he'll interpret it through his brain and it just works absolutely flawlessly. And he's able to hit all the beats that we as humans connect with. And uh, it's what makes him such a special writer, in my opinion. He's able to really uh, empathize with the character and make you empathize with the character. Uh, even though his storytelling is pretty damn compressed, it's it's impressive. It's really awesome, and he also does have incredible artists helping him. Um, I highly recommend checking these out. I don't know about these hardcovers themselves. I think they're a little more difficult to find now, but if you can find them, uh, get them. If they're not too expensive, they are really nice books.
Number four for me is unfortunately a book I no longer own. It is the new X-Men by Graham Morrison Omnibus. So his entire new X-Men run is a great, great time. I really enjoyed it. I know it's uh, controversial for a lot of people. A lot of people really like it. A lot of people hate it. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because Marvel rolled back a lot of what Grant Morrison did. But it was cool. He tried evolving characters a little more. Um, so Beast was changing a little bit. Um, you know, he gave Cyclops this sort of like, well, everyone really got a new costume, this sort of leather jacket sort of vibe. It was cool. It was nice. Cyclops was actually a cool character. He was actually a badass, in my opinion. Um, of course, he introduced uh, Zorn. No, uh, what was what was her name? Something Nova. Sorry, guys. I, I, if you don't know, I'm not the b- biggest X-Men fan. I've read select runs here and there. Uh, Cassandra Nova, that's her name. See, I, I, I got a little bit of knowledge in there, a little bit. Uh, what else? What else did he do? Oh, yeah, Phantom X. He did a lot of really cool stuff, and he had some cool artists working with him, like Frank Whiteley, Chris Bocciolo, uh, Frazier Irving, I think, did some work in there, too. So you get a lot of variety in that sense, too, and his stories offer a lot of variety, too. Uh, it's not all typical super heroics. It's a lot of fun. It's a great read, and the omnibus is pretty solid. Uh, I forget how many issues you get, but it'll last you a good time. It's a great to reread as well because there are so many details and so many things you might miss the first time around. Uh, you know, you'll need a few more reads too. It's really awesome, though. Not n- not too much work at Marvel for Grant Morrison. A few minis here and there. Fantastic Four, one, two, three, four. Um, and then, you know, he did stuff like Marvel Boy, little things here and there, but that was probably his most significant run at Marvel Comics, and it's definitely worth checking out. Doom Patrol, man, if, you're, if you've enjoyed the show, if you happen to catch the show, and you're looking for a place to start reading Doom Patrol, look no further. I know it's not the easiest to get into, but believe me, I had no idea who the Doom Patrol was before I started reading this. You get to figure out who everyone is, and if you've seen the show especially, you already know most of the, all of these characters, honestly, all of them. Uh, and it's just so so well done man talk about crazy ideas coming to life and i think the show did a really fantastic job because they borrowed a lot of ideas from mr grant morrison for the tv show rightfully so because grant morrison came up with some wicked wicked ideas in this book you get to see mr nobody in here you get to see the brotherhood of dada in here as well it's really cool. It's a really awesome run. This is a beefy book too. It's gigantic. Uh, I forget. I always forget what issues it contains. But um, Grant Morrison came in at issue 19 through 63. He does also poke fun at 90s image style comics in this as well with a, a Doom Patrol issue that's sort of 90s extreme. It's really awesome. He's got Richard Case doing artwork who is perfect for the title. I think he knocked it out of the park. And it's it's awesome. It's it's Grant Morrison kind of doing almost the, the most Grant Morrison-ish work. I think The Invisibles is probably the most Grant Morrison a book can get, but uh, Doom Patrol is pretty damn close. I mean, he was doing all kinds of crazy things uh, in this with this uh, with this series and with these characters, and it really set the stage for what the Doom Patrol was going to be. Not all writers afterwards kept up with the similar style. You know, John Byrne did the Doom Patrol at one point. He took them very much to a, a, a more superhero-ish feeling style. But uh, Grant Morrison's man, if you want to uh, trip out and and get some weird and wild ideas, read some really gnarly descriptions. There, are, when he's describing like these creatures that are flying through hallways, or he's describing these uh, the Scissor Men, it's it's oh, it's it's like scratching on on a chalkboard at times. The way the eeriness that he's able to um, basically give out through his his writing, it's phenomenal. He's so descriptive. It's so so damn good. Uh, I, I love Doom Patrol by Graham Morrison. Next up, Joe the Barbarian. This is a book I don't hear too many people talk about. Grant Morrison, Sean Murphy doing the artwork. It's a, it's a story about a boy named Joe, Joe Manson, and he's basically, um, he, he's he's hyperglycemic. You know, he needs, he needs to take his medication, make sure he's uh, staying on top of his sugar levels, making sure, you know, he could, he could pass out, he could die, he could go into a coma. And that's what, that's what happens in the story. He starts going into a, a he starts having a, a hypoglycemic attack. I think that's what it's called. I apologize. I'm, I'm very ignorant to what I'm talking about now, but uh, the, I'm, hopefully the general idea gets across, I really hope. And he's sort of trying to get from his room in the attic down to the kitchen to get his medication or get some sort of uh, a sugar to get him back up and running. And he's got a pet, he's got a pet rat. Um, and it, things really start to spiral out of control. He starts seeing, uh, being in a fantasy world and he starts seeing his rat as this warrior, 
uh, who's got all these brothers and he starts wondering is this real i'm just having i'm just hallucinating and you start seeing the back and forth between the fantasy world and what's actually happening in reality and that's really what happens over the course of this mini series it's just this boy trying to get downstairs to get his medication and it's so damn good oh my god the the twists and turns you see the craziness of the world you know flying flying demons with flaming whatever i I'm, I, I can't even describe it it's it's so much craziness in here you get to see all these action figures come to life as they start helping joe on his mission you get to see him connect with this rat you get to see what happens when a stray dog walks in it is just fantastic and the ending had me weeping like a baby in the best way though because i was extremely happy it's such a satisfying ending you know Graham morrison's hit or miss with me on indie stuff you know books like nameless i, I wasn't wasn't the biggest fan of that um, he had annihilator with fraser irving i wasn't the biggest fan of that either but joe the barbarian crushed it it's so so fantastic uh, this is the deluxe edition i think i got it on amazon a year ago or two years ago for real cheap it's not that expensive uh, i think it's the biggest format you could get it in i wish they would do an absolute size for this i understand it would be a very small book but it's sean murphy's artwork it's it's beautiful it's such a good looking book uh, and you can get the trade paperback of course you could probably find the single issues as well but uh, those are the three ways you can collect this series and i highly recommend you do so it's probably not the best way to show it but the the next story that follows after that for me would be we three we three is a three issue book graham morrison frank quietly on artwork it's uh it's always a book that's a little tough for me to talk about because it's it's again it's just graham morrison taking everything that you love about the ideas and concepts he's exploring and everything that you hate and he throws it all into a story and in these three issues of we three the general plot the general synopsis high level super high level is you've got these animals a rabbit um, a rabbit a cat and a dog and they have been experimented on and essentially hooked up to cybernetics in order to be the tools of the u.s military being sent on assassination missions whatever it may be, right? Preparing this technology for bigger and better animals to create an army of, you know, disposable soldiers. That's essentially the plot. And these animals get out, they escape. These three animals. Um, and that's what, you know, they're we three. They, they're they called one, two, and three. That's how they refer to each other. They have a very interesting way of communicating with each other. They make it work. It's, oh, oh, Frank Quitely's artwork is so beautiful. It's three issues. You're getting a full story. And it's heartbreaking. It's inspirational. It, it's sort of a reminder of keeping your morals in check. Um, you know, people, we can, do, we can do crazy things, man. We can do real crazy things. I think a lot of us have learned during the situation about um, priorities and understanding what means what in our life. And uh, this is a great, uh, great book for that as well, man. If it's three issues that I've reread so many times and it gets me every damn time, the dialogue's fantastic. Uh, I think it's really, that's, that's what gets you right is these small moments. Uh, the ending is uh, sad satisfying rewarding it's it's you have to read it i'm sorry guys you just have to read it we three there's a trade paperback you could probably get the deluxe edition as well on amazon it might not be too cheap but it won't be too expensive either it's only three issues you know like a hundred something pages but it's fantastic you really should check it out if you have the chance to trade paperback deluxe get the single issues whatever multiversity again written by graham morrison with a whole bunch of artists in this though multiversity was a an experimental series that Graham Morrison did for, for DC Comics uh, some years ago, I forget when it was, three years ago or something like that, where he essentially wanted to explore the multiverse. With the new 52, we had an official 52 universes in the DC metaverse, whatever you want to call it. And uh, basically, Graham Morrison said, here, we're going to explore, we're going to create a guidebook, we're going to look at a few of these hand-selected universes and do a story in them. And so that's what he did. And we got a whole bunch of books here um, with varying artists uh, on the creative team. Inside the, this is the deluxe edition, by the way, guys. This series deserves an absolute edition. I don't know why it doesn't have one yet. But inside the dust jacket, you get the full map of the multiverse, which is really, really cool. And, uh, you know, on the front and back, you get uh, some nice, really cool designy artwork. The spine's real cool, too. Nice graphic design on the hardcover itself. 
And what I really like about this is the exploration of it. Grant Morrison's really cool with concepts and ideas and exploring them. He doesn't always hit the nail on the head with execution, but here I think he did on, in, on all fronts. Essentially what's happening is there is a force invading all these universes and they are sending each other messages and warnings through comic books. So they'll read a comic book in their world that were, you know, you know what I mean? Like one, one, one world's uh, reading the comics of the other world. Um, it's really cool, really fun, interesting idea. We get to see what's happening with the monitors um, and we get to find out who this big threat is. And uh, it's really cool. It's really cool. There's a huge cliffhanger at the end of this that has not been explored yet. There's supposed to be a multiversity too. I haven't heard any details about it. I hope it's still a thing being worked on because the ending here was huge and it sort of just got swept under the rug and now Perpetua is a thing. So it's it's very weird. It's very weird, but it's a really good story. You get incredible artists like Frank Quitely, Doug Monke, Ben Oliver, a fantastic, fantastic uh, set of creators on this book. And you get to see varying universes, right? You get to go to the, the sort of Shazam universe where the Marvel family is a huge thing. Um, you get to go into the, the Charleston Comics uh, universe where those characters are a big thing. It's really cool. It's really well done. And some of these stories um, are, are just, it, you just have to read it. They're different. They're just different. It's a different way of telling a story in a comic book. And uh, it's trying to bring comics to life. It's really, it's really different. It's really exciting, very experimental. And I'm really hoping we get a multiversity too. <sighs> of course, I got to have Batman in here, right? You got to have Batman by Grant Morrison because it's one of the most epic Batman storylines runs ever, ever done. And I'm including everything he's done. So you got Gothic, uh, Arkham Asylum, of course, I'm waiting to get the absolute edition of that. Um, and of course, the omnibuses. So we're getting volume three of, I think it's supposed to be later this year, probably might be next year, but that's going to collect the remainder uh, of the material, Batman Incorporated. But here you've got basically Batman uh, through RIP. Of course, with Final Crisis, you get to see Batman die. And then you get the Batman and Robin stuff in here and the return of Batman, Bruce Wayne. Um, it's really awesome. <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible. This Batman run is so epic and so beautiful. It pays homage to so much history throughout, throughout the Batman mythos. I mean, you know, seeing things like Batmite, Zura, and R, these obscure little details in the Batman, Batman's history being revitalized and recreated and reused in a way that nobody expected is fantastic. We, of course, have a huge character get introduced in this run, Damian Wayne, who now plays a significant role in the DC Universe. He's in the Teen Titans. He was in Super Sons. He's a huge character in the DC Universe now, thanks to Grant Morrison. Um, of course, beautiful artwork with fantastic creators. These are the Omnis for Volumes 1 and 2. I didn't pull out any of my Gothic Deluxes. You can get Gothic in a Deluxe. You could get Arkham Asylum in a Deluxe, Trade Paperback, uh, the Absolute Edition. A lot of options, a lot of options. Even with Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin, you can get that in an absolute size hardcover, which is beautiful, stunning Frank Quitely artwork. It's great. It's so good. It's so good. It's not the best recommendation for a new reader. It's going to be very tough to get into this as a new reader because there is, like I said, so much history. And you need to have a general knowledge and understanding of Batman's villains and the universe surrounding him. So I would highly recommend checking out something else if you're a first-time Batman reader. If you still want to, though, take the dive, man. I mean... I'm just I'm speaking from my level. I don't know. You you might have an easier time with it. So um, yeah, I, I do realize I still have this one shrink wrapped. I had a volume one. I read it. Of course, I enjoyed it, but it was beat up. And I had Amazon sending me a replacement copy. So this is the replacement. I haven't opened it yet, but I'm really getting a hankering to reread Batman by Grant Morrison. The last book we're going to talk about, the last run by Grant Morrison, is Animal Man. This is undoubtedly my number one. Number one, I've spoken about the series ad nauseum at this point. It's such a fantastic experiment and story. Man, the, the I, I wish I could just give away the last issue, but it's really the entire buildup of everything. The way comic panels are used, breaking the fourth wall. It's, it's happening here before Deadpool. Um, similar to She-Hulk, I know it's happening there before Deadpool too. Um, but it's really fantastic. Taking a character that really... A lot of people don't know anything about I knew nothing about Animal Man before reading this. Taking a character like that and making him so existential and so much more than he probably was ever dreamed up to be. I mean, you're again cherishing the history, looking at the origin of things, cherishing the idea of comic books and how they can be used to elevate a story. Um, Grant Morrison uh, is 
blew my mind with this story. He absolutely blew my mind. Chris Truog on our work, of course, is fantastic as well. Absolutely helps Grant Morrison's case. But man, some of the dialogue, I mean, not solving whenever characters, and it's what I like about Alan Moore as well, whenever they solve problems without fighting, oh, it gets me so excited. It gets me so excited because it's just, everything always revolves around punching and kicking and screaming. And which is fun. I love that. I love a good action book once in a while, but sometimes I want characters to step out of that predefined uh, bias that they have and that, you know, the the characteristics that make up a comic book character. Tights, beating up people, not really having a family, not giving a shit. Like, you know what I mean? And it's it's really great that Animal Man transcends all those things and ends up being so much more than I think it, it may be ever, anyone ever thought it would be. It's, it's, it's fantastic. This is, if you're, it, this is, I can't, I can't even find the words. <clears throat> I would go so far as to say that this is probably the, the best comic book run ever written. You can challenge me on that. That's fine. I don't mind. It's my opinion. Um, but if you're, if there's anything you want to, if you haven't checked out any of these things, the one thing I, I recommend you need to check out is Animal Man truly breathtaking it'll change the way you look at comic books and uh if you if you disagree with me if you didn't like animal man please comment down below i'm really curious i really want to know why if there's a grant morrison title i didn't mention that you really love let me know down in the comments below as well if you want more detail about any of these titles also hit us up in the comments let me know i can do a full review go into detail show off a bunch of pages you know, give the book a nice, a nice handling and all that. Um, but those are my 10 Grant Morrison runs that I think are the best works that he's ever uh, done. Tell me what yours are. Really curious. If you haven't already and you're still sticking around, be sure to subscribe. This is what we do every day. New content, new videos. Um, check out our Patreon if you're interested in even more. Getting hardcovers. We do giveaways monthly. We do we give away digital coats throughout the weeks as we get them. Anything we can give away, we do. So there are more details down in the description below for that. And then check out Dr. Squatch if you're interested in soap or men's healthcare products. They're a subscription service with the link down in the description below. You get free shipping for life. So check that out. And thank you all very much for tuning in. Once again, I hope you are staying healthy and safe during this pandemic. Um, thoughts and prayers with all of you. And until next time, you stay classy, Internet.